Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, uh, I picked up and just did a little recap on the series that I've been teaching uh, until last week. I haven't been on it for about a week, but um, I was talking about the Roman Catholic false teaching about eternal conscious torment in a place called hell, okay? Um, and then to teach that, I've had to go into the book of Revelation, of course. So I've been teaching a little bit about the book of Revelation. Um, and, you know, that book was the last one that was put in the canon by the councils, okay? And let me let me just stop and, and explain this real quick. I think it's worthy of me talking about again because very few people realize this, okay? In the beginning before the 5th century, okay, but I'm talking like right after Jesus during the apostles and the men that sat under the apostles, during the early, early Christian church, there was just basically two group of men, men or and women, by the way, not just men. Let me make sure you understand that. There were leaders, and it's called the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Western Orthodox Church. Now, I was told by a guy on Facebook that there was no such thing. So I guess history has printed up all these books just so they can lie about that. But here is a print-off. In the, fir the first big church split, if you want to call it that, was in 1054. I've shown this before, but basically you have the Eastern Orthodox Church who are Greek-speaking people. That's all they've ever spoke. I'm going to remind you also that the uh, Septuagint, the Old Testament, was translated into Greek in 300 and 200, by 200 years before Christ, the Hebrew scriptures had been transferred into Greek, 200 B.C., okay? So the Greek-speaking Eastern Orthodox Church has never spoken any language other than Greek. That's why they understand the Old Testament clearly. That's why they understand the New Testament manuscripts clearly because it was written in their language. That's just like if we read something written in English, we probably understand it better because it's our native language than someone who learned English at a later date and their native language might have been Portuguese or uh, Spanish or whatever, right? Are you tracking with me? So we've got two different sex of men, and that's why they had two different councils, okay? You got the Greek-speaking Eastern Orthodox Church that is teaching the Greek-speaking culture. Then you have the Western Church, if you want to call it Western Orthodox Church at one time, and they became, the Western Church became the Roman Catholic Church. Their native language, the only language they've ever, their native what they were born with is Latin. So see, the Greek is not their natural language. They had to learn that. Now, if you wanted someone to teach you Greek, would you want someone who had spoke Greek, lived in that culture, knew everything about it, or someone that lived on the other side of the world that learned how to speak Greek? See, I would want to, the guy over in the Eastern Orthodox Church to teach me Greek. Okay, so the, this big split happened, okay, uh, when the Roman Catholic Church, because they were right there in Rome and had the government and plenty of money, they tried to forcefully overtake and rule over the Eastern Orthodox Church, and that's when that split happened. Okay, now, I've explained that as good as I know how, okay? Now, uh, yesterday I talked about someone t making the comment to me about that uh, I was seeking out new translations and and he said, so we just need to throw our old Bibles away and get these new ones that you want. And I gave you a long, long list of all these different translations starting back in the 1500s prior to the King James Version of the Bible that introduced hell into our United States of America churches, okay? So I'm reading Bibles that's uh, 100 years older than the King James. So uh, no, I'm not making up things. I've just done due diligence and research on this because look, every lie puts people in bondage. And if I love my father and I love Jesus and I love people, I'm going to tell you the truth, even if it upsets the little uh, rocks the boat, right? And I am rocking a few boats. And um, and I do understand, you know, um, when I was born again, or I call it, Jesus walked in my mother's hospital room. I was an atheist. 
and I got saved to the uttermost, okay? When I left that room the next day, a totally new person had been born, and I have been on fire for 13 years now, and I spend hours of study, not not because everybody has to. I'm not saying everybody should or have to. I love this, and it's something in my spirit that the Lord put in me. And uh, so when I study, I study layer after layer after layer because I have submitted myself to Holy Spirit and told him, Lord, I will give up anything to know you and to know truth. I will give up anything. Uh, I'll give up church. I'll give up my Bible. I'll give up my friends. I'll, I'll do whatever. I will totally surrender to you because I want to know you and I want to know truth and I want to walk with you. And I want other people to walk with our Lord, okay? So let me hop in. I'm going to do another Q&A today about a question a guy uh, wrote me. He said, uh, and he, this is, uh, and, I, and I know if he thinks this, other people do too. And this is why I'm going to talk about it, okay? I'm not bringing his name out. I'm not doing it to embarrass anybody. And he's kind of mad at me. He says, so the Lord would allow us to have a flawed Bible that is supposed to be his word for us, surviving many generations, but it's really not, capital N-O-T, not his word. Lots of exclamation and question mark, right? Uh so why don't we just scrap every wrong version out there? This subject, uh, talking about hell, uh, is too much confusion. This is bringing too much confusion. Okay, and I just answered you about the too much confusion. You know, guys, I'm, I'm trying to teach it on a level that I'm not confusing people, and I'm trying to lay the footprints as easily as I know how because my goal is not to cause confusion or hurt people. It's right the opposite, okay? Look, when you're told that Jesus loves you enough to die for you and that God's love is never-ending and his mercy is never-ending and then somebody starts telling you that Jesus and his Father is going to throw people into a lake of fire and torment them forever and ever, that in itself causes confusion and it's not settling in your spirit because you don't understand you know that's like my mommy rocking me in the rocking chair telling me she loves me but five minutes later she's got a torch chasing me around the house going to burn me see that doesn't make sense to a lot of people i've had 25 or 30 people write me thanking me for teaching this and three people writing me telling me i need to shut up and leave people where they are so uh, let me give you the answer to this gentleman because I, I do understand that this is really hard for some people. You know, it's kind of like finding out when you're uh, 40 years old that you find this birth certificate and your mom and daddy ain't your mom and daddy. And you're like going, what? I thought this all my life. So I understand this. But I have learned to challenge everything that does not start and end in a foundation of love. God is love. Everything starts with love, and I promise you everything's going to end in love, okay? Let me read you my answer, okay? I said, the Bible itself records that man changed and added to Holy Scripture or of the Bibles, of which they will be held accountable for. I'm going to read this to you. Very few people realize this. Jeremiah 8, chapter 8, 8 through 10, and I'm in the expanded Bible. You keep saying it, we are wise because we have the teachings of the Lord, the laws and instructions of our Lord. But actually, those who explain the scriptures, watch this, have written lies with their pens. The false pens of the scribes have made it a lie. So what this is saying, let me read verse 9. The, these wise teachers, they're making fun of these wise teachers, by the way, okay? How can you say that you are wise? It, up in verse 8, it says, you keep saying we are wise. And in the literal uh, Hebrew, it says, you keep saying you, how can you claim you are wise? That's the literal in it. So let me go back down to verse 9. These wise teachers refuse to listen to the word of the Lord and rejected his word, so they are not really wise at all. Okay, so what this verse just said is they took Holy Scripture and with their ink pens, they changed it to say what they wanted it to say. Okay, all right. Now, 
here's what I, the rest of my answer to this gentleman. I said, Jesus, when he was here, Jesus was continuously correcting religious men and their lies about his father. But for some reason, you believe we should just play along with religion. Now, I know that might have sounded a little harsh, but seriously, uh, let me finish reading what I told him. I said, what it sounds like to me, uh, what you're saying is that you would rather people stay trapped in religious lies because telling them the truth about who and when the lies were added into their Bibles, into scriptures, makes us uncomfortable, makes you uncomfortable. Did you know... Uh, we cannot just pretend like something is okay because it makes people uncomfortable. Uh, because be, keeping leaving people in lies is wrong. If God was comfortable with leaving people in lies, he would have left Adam and Eve right where they were, never worked through man to get Jesus here so he could bring truth and correction to our wrong thinking, guys. Now, look, I'm going to go ahead and go long today. Uh, it's, I'm into my uh, video by 11 minutes, and I really like to stop about 12 minutes, but I'm trying to get through this teaching so I can start talking about healing and raising people from the dead and all these other wonderful things that I absolutely love to teach. I love to teach about us being sons and daughters, uh, kingdom carriers and all of this, and, and the kingdom of God is here and now. But I want people to get set free from religious lies and not walk in fear of the one who loves them more than anything, right? Okay, I want to talk to you for the rest of my time. I, I have this book here, and um, I was talking about in it, there are some uh, uh, references. This is about how uh, St. Jerome mistranslated all he's like a, a a lone ranger out there with no one to keep him accountable for his translation of the bible uh the roman catholic church uh, commissioned him to come together and put together one bible for them for it to be their official bible and he did that but he didn't have a lot of oversight, and he was allowed to do whatever he wanted to. Now, and this explains all of that, but I want to read you a little bit. It, it says, the correspondence of Augustine, I'm on a website, by the way, that I can put the link under here, but it's talking about the uh, exchanges of letters between Augustine and St. Jerome, and uh, St. Jerome, uh, St. Augustine was concerned with Jerome's new Latin translation of the Old Testament. And it says, it, it talks about how he parted from the Greek version. Uh, it's called the 70 or the Septuagint. And so I want to read you just a couple of little excerpts from, he wrote him four different letters, okay? And he, t he actually writes him and he says, I have written you, uh, two letters and not received a reply from you. So that's part of one of these letters on this website. But let me read this if I can real quick. And this is in 394 AD. And this is Augustine, right? Now, Augustine's the one that taught the hell doctrine, believe it or not, uh, later on from Jerome's Bible. But right then, at this moment in time, he knew that the Bible that Jerome was doing was in error. And he was trying to correct him and get him back on course and stay with church history. Here we go. I beseech you not to devote your labor to the work of translating into Latin the sacred can canonical books. Uh, to let it be plain, uh, it says, if you plan to follow this method, please add with additional notes explaining why you're changing the scriptures, basically. Okay, let me finish this. To let it be seen plainly what differences there are between the versions of your, yours and that of the Septuagint, okay, whose authority is worthy of the highest esteem. For my part, I cannot sufficiently express my wonder that anything should at this date be found in Hebrew manuscripts which escaped so many translators perfectly acquainted with the language. Now, I want you to, I, I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'm going to pick up on this and I'll mark to read the next letter from him on my next video because I want to read this too because it's very good. But let me wrap it up with this. St. Jerome was being written to by Augustine because Augustine understood the 
70 men who translated scriptures in 200 B.C. were scholars in Hebrew and Greek. And now we've got a man whose native language is Latin going back and changing the Bible. Okay? So I'm going to sign off here, and I will see you here next week. Bye-bye.